So all the entities that we have seen till now are actually referred to as strong entities, right? So there is a special case of entities called as weak entities. So let me motivate weak entities with an example, right? So this is, an, this is a fairly real world example. So if you are a customer for Amazon, of course, you have a unique customer ID, which is the key, you have a customer name. So Amazon also allows you, or most e-commerce companies allow you to have family members have an account which is tied to your primary account. For example, I could have an account for my son. I could have an account for my daughter. I could have an account for my spouse, right? And things like that. So what happens now here is you can create a relationship like this. You're, you're a customer. This customer belongs. So there is a relationship called belongs to and you have a family number, family member here. Remember very, very importantly that this family number here does not have a primary key. So this, so this family member here is referred to as a weak entity. And we typically represent weak entities with a double box like this. Right. So look, look at how I've represented it. The double box here basically makes, ma basically communicates to us that it is a weak entity and weak entity itself cannot exist in isolation. A weak entity needs to have, again, a weak entity needs to be, a weak entity needs to be assigned to a unique owner entity, needs to be assigned, needs to be assigned or related. You can think of it as assigned or related to a unique, needs to be assigned or related to a unique owner entity, right? So in this case, in this case, if I am a customer, I have a family member for whom I also have an account, right? I am called as the owner entity. I am called as the owner entity, right? And for every family member, he the family member has to be related, has to be, has to have a owner entity which is unique right that's very very important right and this weak entity itself does not have does not have a primary key does not have a primary key so it doesn't have something like a customer id a customer has a proper customer id but given a customer id let's say you my customer has a bunch of family members if i tell you the name of the family member Given again, given a customer or given the owner entity who is the customer here, given a customer ID, you can uniquely determine the customer. Once you uniquely determine the customer, and if you are given the name of a family member, you will understand who that family member is. So that's why this is actually see so this is not a primary key, but this is an attribute. This is a key attribute of a weak entity. We we represent it using dotted lines here. So we can determine the family number, family member, given name and the owner entity details. If you just give me the name, I cannot determine who this, uh, who this family member is, right? I also need to have the owner entity's unique ID or primary key, right? So in addition to name, if you give me the customer ID, who is the, and because the customer ID is the owner entity here, I can determine who this family member is. So these are called as weak entities and every weak entity, remember weak entity need to be related. Given a weak entity, it has to be related to a owner entity, which is a strong entity. The owner entity has to be a strong entity, right? A strong entity are all this regular entities that we have seen till now. It's very, very important. And this and the relationship between the owner entity and the weak entity, this relationship is one too many is one too many because a customer could have multiple family members right for whom he wants to create a family account but given a family member given any family member the family member is associated with a unique owner that's why this is one to m and if you notice this this is total participation on this side which means for every family member i need to have a unique customer that this family member is related to. Of course, why is this not total participation? Because there might be some customers who do not want to add family members into their account. That's perfectly all right, right? But if you notice, this is a one-to-many relationship with total participation from the family member. 
and this relationship here remember this relationship is a relationship between the owner or owner entity which is a strong entity and a weak entity this relationship if you notice we actually use a diamond like this for relationships right but the moment i have a diamond within a diamond this represents a weak relationship this represents a weak relationship and what is a weak relationship a weak relationship is a relationship between a weak entity and its owner strong entity right so i hope again in the single diagram there are lots of interesting details here the key aspects that you have to remember here is that this is a weak relationship this is a weak entity a weak entity participates totally in this weak relationship and it is a one to many relationship so there is a key associated with a weak entity but it cannot uniquely determine the weak entity itself you need this key along with the key of the owner entity to uniquely determine the weak entity okay I, again there are lots of things that i just said but it's 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 fun actually if you think about it it's a very simple concept now let's look at the number of tables right number of tables required to store this information again we have seen we have seen we have seen an example like this right we've already seen a relationship like this if you recall let me just go back and show that to you right look at this we have seen a relationship where you have one to many relationship which is total relationship on this side right except that in our case it's a weak entity that's it right that doesn't change the number of tables required so this is a one to many relationship with the many relation the the many side having a total participation here we saw earlier that we require two tables to represent this data and what are the two tables one table just consists of e1 the other table consists of the relation and e2 look at this the one table consists of just e1 the other table consists of the relation and e2 similarly similarly using the same concept here if i want to store this in tables one table will just consist of this this will be my table 1 the second table will consist of these two right the second table will consist of the relation and the weak entity right so this is how again same concepts i need minimum of two tables to store this weak relationship between a weak entity and its owner strong entity right so i need two tables very similar arguments just the way we have seen in the previous video so i need a minimum of two tables i need a minimum of two tables one table with the weak relation and the weak entity and the other other table with the strong owner entity okay that's how we can store this data so this is all about weak entities unless otherwise stated every entity is a strong entity by default right so let's look at an example here right let's solve a very interesting problem imagine i have this diagram if you notice this is a weak entity okay this is a weak relationship this is a one to many relationship which is also total okay so if you notice this is also one to many relationship but this is a strong entity with a1 as the primary key here b1 is the primary key here c1 is a key of this weak entity now the question here is how many tables do i need right so obviously four tables is straightforward what is the minimum number of tables what is the minimum number of tables i need to store this information four tables is obvious one table for this one table for this right one table for this and one table for this because we have seen we have seen just now just now we have seen that i can combine these two to one table so four tables is obviously obvious four very doable four tables doable okay i'll combine these two into one table i'll have one table for this one table for this and one table for this this is very doable can i do something better than this okay what if what if can i do it with three tables again this is slightly promising because this is a one to many relation because i have a one to many relationship and this is also a total participation look at this i have one to many with total participation here right now instead of three tables here again you can go back to the previous example that we saw in the previous video right so look at this uh, look at this example yes look at this example this is a one to many relationship with the many side having total participation here we have three we have two entities and one relationship and we could store all this information in just two tables okay we have seen this right same logic we can apply here same argument we can apply here now now what we can do here is 
See, because this is the many side which is total participation, I can combine these two into one table. I can have one table for this, right? I can have one table for this, right? So I can have one table combining E1 and R1, right? I can have one table just for E2. I can have one table for R2 and E3, right? Look, look, at, look at how we can quickly solve these problems if you have understood the concepts that I've explained in the previous video. That's why I've taken a lot of time to explain each of these cases in the previous videos, right? Look at this. This is basically one to many with one side being many and one side being total, that to the many side. In this case, what did we do? The relation and the many side got grouped together, right? Exactly the same thing that we have done here. The many side and the relation got grouped together into one table. This, uh, this one side, the, the side which has the one relationship or one uh, one cardinality became the second table. This became the third table. So now what will happen here? In this table, I'll have A1, A2 and I also want to store the relation. Because I want to store the relation, I need to store the key here. So I'll also store B1 here. This is my primary key. This is my foreign key. This is my table 1. What about table 2? Table 2, I'll have B1, comma B2 and B1 is the primary key. What about table 3? Look at this. I want to store this relation. This relation is between E2 and E3, which means I want to store B1, right? Because this key has to be stored here. B1, C1 and C2. And obviously B1 is a foreign key here. Look at this. And obviously the key here is B1, comma C1, right? Because I can use, again, for this, this is a key for the weak entity. This is a strong entity. Right? This is the strong entity or the owner entity in this case. So B1, C1 we can uniquely identify each of my uni each of my weak entities. This is a foreign key to this. This is a foreign key to this. And I can solve it just with three tables. And look at how I am leveraging what we have already studied in the previous video and the basics that we learned about weak entities in this video and combining everything to quickly answer this. It, it literally took us like 30 seconds to answer this question. Right? So the next interesting concept is called as self-referential relations. Imagine I have a relation like this. I have an entity E1, which has an attribute A1, which is a primary key and an attribute A2, which is a non-primary key, uh, which, is, uh, which is just an attribute. Now imagine I have a relation R. This relation is from E1 to itself. Okay, this is a relation from E1 to itself. Like one, exa one example here is, an employee, right? An employee manages another employee. An employee manages another employee, right? Look at this. I'll have an, I'll have, sorry, let me just, so I'll have an employee here. Every employee has a manager, right? So this manager's relationship is from an employee to the employee back. This is a very simple example of self-referential relations, right? So now if you look at this, what happens in the case of self-referential self relations? How do I translate self-referential relations to tables? The concepts stay the same. We will just use the set theoretic approach. Again, here I could have one to one, I could have one to many, or I could also have many to many cases. So let's go one by one. Okay, very simple. We'll just go back to our set theoretic approach. So I have my entity E1, again E1. So this is a mapping or relation from E1 to E1, right? So for every entity here, there is a one to one map, right? There's a one to one map. But everything is partial relation, right? Everything here is a partial participation, not a partial relation. It's a partial participation, right? Now, what can I do here? Can I get away with a single table? Let's think. So let's assume this A1. So I'll have A1, A2. A1 is my primary key, right? Very simple, right? If A1 is related to another employee or another entity, right? So let's call the let's call the IDs here. Let's call the IDs here as A1 and A2, or let's call the attributes here as A1, A2. Let's call the attributes here as A1 dash, A2 dash, just to avoid confusion. So I can create a table now. I can simply create a single table with A1, okay, A1, A2, A1 dash, and this relation also has B1 as a attribute, right? A1 will be the primary key. Look at this, A1 will be the primary key. A1 dash is going to be a foreign key to A1, right? A1 dash. See, when I have A1 comma A1 dash, 
see if this value exists and this value also exists that means there is this link between both of them okay while on the other hand if for this for this case what will happen i'll have this i'll have this to be null right very simple case very very simple case right i just want again for this i don't even have to worry about it because the information related to this this entity right is already there in this table that's everything in this table i am anyway storing right so i can get away just with one table here what if i have one to many okay let's look at that case right what if i have one to many relationship right again i have e1 here again i have e1 here this is one to many like this one to many one to many right and there can be some empty ones left can i get away with one table now let's see if i can get away with just one table okay so i can't have again here let's call the fields a1 and a2 let's call the fields here a1 dash and a2 dash okay again this is one to many right now if i make see again i'll keep a1 a2 a1 dash and i'll have b1 if i make a1 primary key then there is a problem because if a1 is a primary key there's a huge problem here right because this maps to two values i will get two values in this cell which i don't want right which i don't want so what if i make a1 dash what if i make a1 dash a primary key now everything here is mapped to exactly one value unique value right everything here is mapped to one exact value so if i make this as my primary key there will be no sets that will be formed in any of the cells and this will become a foreign key to this problem solved right so even in a one to many self referential structure self referential sort of relations i can get away with just one table okay this is how i'll store my table very simple case here now let's go to the many to many relation okay in the many to many relation what would happen i would have i would have something like this right many to many so this is possible this is also possible there will be some more left here so can i get away with one table now i cannot because if, imagine again i have a1 and a2 here i have a1 dash and a2 dash here right so if i do anything if i do a1 a2 a1 dash and b1 if i do anything like this for every a1 dash value for a, for a a1 dash value i can have two possibilities here which means this here i'll get two values so not possible on the other hand for for a value for a1 also i'll have two values so one table is not possible i need two tables and what are what are those tables going to be a1 and a2 in one table this is my table 1 my table 2 is a1 a1 dash and b1 obviously this a1 is going to be a foreign key to this right here again i don't require three tables again this is a many to many relation right because this information is already stored i am storing the information for this i am storing the information for the relation that's it two tables are done right again a very very simple case here so whenever you have self referential relations like this whether it's one to one one to many many to many all these cases we can easily solve we can fairly easy easily solve using our set theoretic understanding of the concepts